Hey you geeks, Korra. The legend has returned! But to what? Since Mike and Brian's departure from Netflix, the Avatar fandom have noticeably deflated. Korra again has terrible timing. So let's stoke some controversy and talk about where Korra's shipping went wrong. It was not when Korra and Asami's relationship became canon. Though for incredibly intense people like myself, that had to be confirmed on Tumblr. Nor was it when Korra broke up with Mako for good. It's over for real this time. Or when she got her memory wiped and started dating him again. So you're not still mad at me? Why would I be mad? We had that fight before you left, remember? No. Not even their first breakup. So what? Are you breaking up with me? Yeah. I guess I am. Or when she chose him after a season-long love square where she spurned Boleyn, who was frankly too good for her anyway. Cora and I are perfect for each other. She's strong. I'm strong. She's fun. I'm fun. She's beautiful. I'm gorgeous. No. The problem occurred at season one's drawing board. With only one season to plot, the writers said, hey, let's reignite a shipping war, and did just that. Of course, this is Avatar, and they couldn't just reignite any shipping war. They wanted to tap into that brutally awesome Zutara shipping war. So they gave us season one, Zutara's Consolation. He was a fire boy, she was a water girl. Can I make it any more obvious? Well, I will be. The Zutara dynamic that appealed to me and many proponents was to have a fiery, headstrong, yet damaged character who really just needed someone to talk to. Someone who is more reserved, more empathetic, who knows loss. What happened to your parents? They were mugged by a firebender. He cut them down right in front of me. They mourn a family member so much they wear a token around their neck. Thus, we have the base characters for the ultimate pairing. But what made Zutara infamous was the scandal. That Katara would, by choosing Zuko, reject the perfectly nice and caring young man, shattering his heart and enraging the fandom. That was scandalous. Even more so, they gave Mako a perfectly nice, attractive girlfriend, thus making Makora doubly forbidden. When the heroine fell in love with the enemy general's son, who was supposed to marry the princess, you should do what she did. This scandalous romance was also rushed and did not make good character development. Let's try this way. And what if Kora's not down there? Then we pick another tunnel until we find her. I first let it slide because I was getting my Zutara consolation prize. Mako was a bad boy and he was mine. I mean, Korra's. And they were good for each other, despite them lying to important people in their life. There was this one time during the tournament when Mako and Korra kissed, but... They kissed? Believe me, I was upset too, but I'm over it. They were a great couple, and season one ended there. I realized... I love you, Cora. Then season two got greenlit, and the melodrama had to continue. Seasons two through four, drama. The Makora relationship in season two was partially well thought out. It showed the natural repercussions from their rush in the first season. Who'd have thought that people who pursue personal pleasures at the expense of all else would be terrible in a relationship? I thought you wanted me to be supportive. Now you want me to tell you what I think? Make up your mind. Ooh. Of course they break up. Well, I guess if we're both putting our jobs first, maybe there's no room for our relationship. They break up in the most dramatic way possible, but everything changed when the evil spirits attacked. 
and inflicted memory loss. Thus, Cora's relationships stopped towing the line with just baiting fans and fell into pure melodrama. Have you told Cora yet about how you guys broke up and then you kind of started dating Asami while she was off getting attacked by dark spirits? So we have Cora break up with Mako again. I, I broke up with you. I remember. But I thought you said you lost part of your memory. I did, but being inside the Tree of Time brought it back. And all fan expectation for subtle, character-based romance has been blown. And then they slid in Korra and Asami's relationship, the first romantic same-sex relationship displayed in an animated show for a kid's network. So I had no context for what I was looking at. Sure, there's the letters. I wrote to Asami while I was away. I asked her not to tell you. I'm sorry. And the blush. And I'm loving the hair. Thanks. You're looking snazzy as always. But Cora had never shown such subtlety in romance before. Was this character growth or a blatant grab at relevance as the show was slowly getting shoved aside by Nickelodeon? I can't say, but that the relationship had to be confirmed over a blog post was highly problematic. Thus, the problem with Cora's romantic relationships were that they were there to scandalize and shock. And they did. They did it so well that most fans hate her relationships. And some fans hate Cora, which is unfair. She's a good character, adrift in a sea of poorly written arcs. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you would like to see more. Your patronage is greatly appreciated.